Perhaps the most impressive early hydrofoil was built by an American living in Canada, Alexander Graham Bell. Yes, the same Bell who invented the telephone. In 1919, his boat, called the HD4, set an official water speed record of over 70 miles per hour. Much later, during World War II, an 80-ton hydrofoil called the VS-8 was launched. It was 150 feet long and was designed to carry tanks and supplies to support Rommel's North African campaign. Ten years later, a test hydrofoil named Lantern was created in the United States to evaluate a constant lift control system. It was one of the earliest hydrofoils using electronic controls. In 1951, the Office of Naval Research contracted with Baker Manufacturing for the construction of two 24-foot hydrofoils. The first of these hydrofoils was high pockets with a surface piercing foil configuration. The second Baker hydrofoil, known as high tail, had a fully submerged foil system. Shown here is Halo Bates. It had an electronic automatic foil control system. Its power plant an Avco T53 gas turbine engine provided about a thousand horsepower. The naval architectural firm of Gibbs and Cox assembled a team for the design of hydrofoil test craft. One of these craft, Sea Legs, made its first flight in 1957 and demonstrated its excellent sea keeping performance in rough water up to speeds of 27 knots. During the testing of sea legs, the Maritime Administration placed a contract with Dynamic Developments to build a hydrofoil capable of speeds up to 60 knots. As a result, the experimental ship Denison was launched in 1962 at Oyster Bay, Long Island. In the same year, FRESH-1, an acronym for Foil Research Experimental Supercavitating Hydrofoil, was designed and built by the Boeing Company. The purpose of this 53-foot-long test vehicle was to evaluate a variety of foil systems at high speeds. The Fresh One program was soon followed by Boeing's High Point, named after the North Carolina city. The ship was 116 feet long and displaced about 125 tons. Later in that decade, two hydrofoil patrol gunboats were built for the U.S. Navy. Patrol gunboat hydrofoil PGH-1 Flagstaff was propeller driven and had a conventional, that is, airplane-like foil configuration. The second hydrofoil gunboat built for Navy evaluation was the Boeing Tucumcari, a water jet provided the thrust when foil borne. Both Flagstaff and Tucumcari saw service in Vietnam between September 1969 and February 1970. In 1960, Buships had ordered the building of the AGEH-1 plane view. It was designed to fly at 50 knots initially and after redesigned 90 knots. Its purpose was evaluation for anti-submarine warfare and other naval missions. About the same time, the Canadian government was exploring several hydrofoil designs, the most notable one being the ship Bras d'Or. In 1954, Supermar designed this surface-piercing hydrofoil to be built by the Leopoldo Rodrique shipyard in Messina, Italy. It is the 32-ton PT-20, a 72-passenger hydrofoil with a cruising speed of 35 knots. This Rodrique's RHS-160 hydrofoil carries up to 300 passengers. At 85 tons, its two powerful supercharged diesel engines give a speed of 36 knots. In 1970, NATO indicated a need for fast, seaworthy missile ships to operate in the Mediterranean, North Sea, and Baltic waters. So the PHM, Patrol Hydrofoil Missile Program, was begun. Six of these ships were launched, and by 1983, all were stationed in Key West, Florida. The PHM ships were named after constellations. With about 88 to choose from, the Navy decided on Pegasus, Hercules, Tauros, Aquila, Iris, and Gemini.
The Italian Nimbio class of hydrofoils followed the Tucum carry design. In 1970, an Italian company was contracted by the Italian Navy for the design and construction of the P420 Sparvirio class of hydrofoil missile craft. By 1997, Sparvirio slash Nimbio hydrofoils were built. In 1977, the Israeli government contracted with Grumman to design and build the first of a series of hydrofoils based on the U.S. Navy flagstaff. However, its weight increased from 69 tons to 105 tons, limiting the success of the program. Owens Jetfoil is the world's most advanced commercial hydrofoil. The design allows higher speeds and greater comfort. It easily operates in open water routes. Utilizing experience gained from its Navy hydrofoils, Boeing used a fully submerged foil system with automatic controls and water jet propulsion. The result is a 300 passenger hydrofoil that flies at 45 knots in heavy seas. This Sputnik cannot orbit the Earth, but from 1961 on, it can carry 300 passengers up the Volga River 560 miles in 14 hours. It displaces 100 tons. Komita seats 100 passengers and first flew the Black Sea in 1961. Modifications of it were built mainly at Gorky and Poti, Russia. Cyclone is a modern Soviet passenger hydrofoil. It seats 250 people and its two 5,000 horsepower gas turbines drive water jets. Its speed is 45 to 50 knots maximum and 42 knots cruising. The Russian's Babochka at 400 tons is the largest hydrofoil in the world. It has three marinized aircraft gas turbine engines creating up to 15,000 horsepower each. It has surface piercing foils forward, fully submerged foils aft, and has been reported to have a maximum speed of over 50 knots. What you have seen is a sample of the book Ships That Fly by John Meyer. This 199 page PDF book of text and photos is available on compact disc. Included on the disc is a slideshow of 145 hydrofoil photographs. The disc containing both can be acquired by clicking on the link shown on this page. And finally, don't wait to get your copy of Hydrofoils Design, Build, Fly. Go to Amazon.com or just click on the button.